Hey, I'm Kevin from Draw Off, and today I've gathered nine other artists from all across the internet to reimagine SpongeBob SquarePants in their own unique styles. Let's check them out. Well, hello there. My name is Christian. I'm an abstract artist from Nebraska. Is my face glowing? Yes. It's my $2 moisturizer from Walmart. What I plan on doing in this drawing is I want to go a little bit more literal with the actual shape of a sponge. Well, I went in with an oil pastel sketch, of course, in yellow because SpongeBob is yellow. Um, the tools I used, of course, oil pastel. They're my favorite. Um, some are very hard and translucent. Some are very creamy and opaque. I do like to start off with a more uh, translucent end off with the creamier one. Um, it adds a better blending effect, especially when I get to the scratchy scratch. Y'all, I love to use a little screwdriver to do these little scratches. It adds some texture and it also has like a 3D effect when you look at it super close. Hola, my name is Agustina and I'm a character designer. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna do a very, very rough sketch just to get the idea right. You don't have to worry about making the picture pretty at first, it doesn't matter. You just need to get the idea right. What I like about drawing digitally is that you can play with the shapes a lot and push the pose if you want with the selection tool. I always thought of Spongebob as one of us, so guessing that he's stuck in his pineapple just like we are stuck in our houses. So I thought of drawing him very late at night, scrolling through the internet. So once we have this very rough sketch, what I'm gonna do next is create a new layer and start working on top of this one. Probably if you eat a bag of chips you will want something sweet after. So I'm gonna draw a couple of snacks there. Hi, my name is Natalie Cherry. I am a watercolor and sketch artist from South Africa. I focus mainly on watercolors right now with a little bit of line work. So I chose a version of him where it looked like he was excited and moving because I am a dancer as well. I used a black micron pen to outline and then I do a base layer. And in this base layer, I like to add the shadow, the dark and the light so that when I build on top of that, it just creates more depth and then I apply another layer which adds some contrast and then the final layer I add white and black. I didn't have a lot of I guess mentorship. I watched a lot of YouTube, I watched a lot of Instagram videos and I read a bunch so the other thing that is quite fun is finding artists that are on a similar level to you on Instagram and seeing what they're doing and kind of trying it out yourself. Hi, I'm Kenny. I'm an illustrator from Laguna Beach, California, and today I'm going to be drawing Spongebob. I always start on a toned canvas, uh, so I just lay down a basic color and then I get sketching. Um, and while I'm sketching, some of the main things I'm trying to think about are tangents, so making sure lines aren't touching where I don't want them to touch. Most of my digital art, I use the crayon tool in Photoshop to give my art kind of like a fuzzy, like warm, childlike feeling to it. Something that really inspires me about SpongeBob and my own art actually is how all the characters are like flat color. They're, you know, just smooth looking. And then the backgrounds are these beautiful, like whimsical paintings that have a lot of texture and you can see all the brush strokes in them. So I tried to pull that from the show into my piece today. Hi there, everybody. My name is Michaela Moore. I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I am a character artist. Today, in this reimagining, I am drawing SpongeBob wearing street fashion. So um, I went ahead and I whipped up a thumbnail. I enjoy starting off with thumbnails simply because it just allows me to get out all of my ideas and let me choose the best one to go with. So what I want to make sure I get in are some very interesting shapes and make some good use of the negative space and the positive space. The more contrasting shapes you have, the more interesting your design is. Now that I'm done with this, it is time to go on to my favorite part, coloring and shading. 
Hey everyone, my name is Jasmine and I'm the founder of Get Caked LA, a pancake artist based in Los Angeles, California. Today we're gonna be reimagining SpongeBob as pancake art. Personally, I'm really excited for this opportunity. I feel like as soon as they emailed me, I knew I was ready for this. It's like I've been waiting for this my entire life. What I usually do is I always start in the middle of their face and then I create the outline afterwards and work my way out. Some of the challenges that I experienced while making this pancake were the hands. I'm really bad with making hands, even cartoon hands for some reason. Hi, my name is Clarissa Ruiz. I'm a visual artist in Costa Mesa, California, and I specialize in painting and drawing. To start, I do a rough drawing in pencil um, just to get everything laid out. Once that's done, then I erase most of it so that I can see it and work from it. Next, I did the background. So I did a wash of blue ink and then I added some bikini bottom flowers. Once that was all dry, then I focused on SpongeBob. I took my watercolors and gave him some color and then I let that dry for a little while. After I took my pen and added some definition and texture, to the drawing portion of it. I made a few mistakes just by smearing the watercolor, um, but that happens. And if I were to do it again, I would probably would just erase more of the lines at the beginning. Okay, so for my version of SpongeBob, I'm going to be drawing digitally on my trusty Wacom Cintiq in Adobe Photoshop. And my idea is to reimagine SpongeBob as kind of a huge underwater robot, similar to Wally -E or uh, Big Brother from Bioshock. So I started off with a couple of quick sketches using a blue pencil brush. Now using blue is a holdover from my print days because uh, light blue doesn't typically show up in photographs or photocopies. Once I was happy with my sketch, I used a thick black dead weight brush to ink the major forms and outlines and then I went in with a thinner black line for the details. I did all the straight lines freehand because even though he's a robot, I wanted the drawing to still have an organic feel. And because I'm very lazy. For the colors, I stuck to SpongeBob's original color scheme, but I desaturated everything to give it a more real world look. I used his eyes as these two big dramatic light sources and I adjusted the background and the shadows to match. Finally, I added some texture and some details and a little bit of color correction in order to sell the whole underwater scene. Okay, hey, I'm Sammy June. This is my dad, Doc. Hi. And he is kind of an amazing inventor, has been my whole life, and he just like whipped this thing out for me, made of, what's it made of? ABS sheet. For those of you who know what that is, <laughs> um, I, it's like plastic. Plastic. It's for our iPads to be able to draw. So we just uh, put the harness thing on and then put it up against you with this pipe and it hooks on. And then you just fit your iPad in and it even has a little charger in the back. Like who does this? My dad does this. <laughs> All right, dad. So my first one, I did two because I didn't love my first one. This was my first one. <laughs> so I just was like, I think I'm gonna do a different one. I like it though. Uh, thanks. <clears throat> so my second one, I, I used the same face from this one and I just brought it over and I did a different shaped sponge. And then I decided to give him my style because he usually wears a, a bow tie and so I gave him a bolo tie. <laughs> And, and this is... Um, is this a zipper? Yeah, I gave him a zipper. Well, that's pants. He's wearing pants. Okay, okay. And, um, and the kneecaps yeah, are really cute. Yeah, I gave him kneecaps. <laughs> and the purple shoes. Yeah, yeah. I made him non-binary. That's very good. Thank you. Mine's not quite that creative. No, let's see it. Okay. Are you kidding? That's amazing. But it's not creative. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How do you do this? Did you whip this out in like 10 minutes? I think it was 25 minutes. 25 minutes, mine took me two days. <laughs> <laughs> After like flipping the pancake, I was really pleasantly surprised at how good it came out. In my family, we would call it the one. It feels definitely like it's uh, one of my better pancakes and I'm really proud of how it came out. Even though it's a very sad picture, I had tons of fun while drawing it and I hope you had fun while watching it. Thank you. Gracias. Ciao. I really like how these turned out. I like making the jellyfish look all shiny and sparkly and SpongeBob's expression is so cute. So I'm really happy with it. 
I did have a lot of fun doing this because Spongebob <laughs> is just quite a vibrant, happy little thing. And it was fun to paint something that lives underwater because it goes with watercolor very much. I really love how this came out. He's got his Gary themed backpack. He's got his jellyfishing gear, Krabby Patty pin on his tie, Krusty Krab hat, jellyfish on his pants. There's a lot going on. Even his watch is like Patrick themed because it's pink and green. I like the final piece. It's definitely still recognizably SpongeBob, but it has my style on it. So I'm pretty pleased with it. I like how my Spongebob turned out. One of the things I love about drawing robots is all the little details that you can put into it. Now, is it nightmare fuel? Probably. But do I love them? Yeah. I think I did pretty well, especially kind of in the face area. The nose was also a little bit challenging, but overall, I love how it turned out. I think it looks pretty cool. I love the colors and also the scratchy scratches. Um, yeah, I think that's it.